Hey, welcome to Super Social Club. I'm Jeremy, and today I have a couple of Cavalan Virgin Oaks. Both of these were barreled on the exact same day in 2006, bottled a year apart, making them some of the oldest whiskey that Cavalan has ever released. I'll let you know which one I prefer when I nose them, taste them, and give them a mark. All right, both of these bottled exclusively for Truth Malters. They are a Canadian importer of Cavalan. Uh, like I said, both uh, barreled on the exact same day in 2006. Uh, this one bottled 2019, so it makes it 13 years, nine days old. And this one bottled in 2020, it makes it 14 years, three months, and 14 days old. Both 59.4% ABV. Let's see how this is on the nose. So just incredibly unique nose here. Um, you get elements like it's bourbon and you get elements like it's scotch. So I'm getting like, like leather aspects to it. Um, like the oaky note in here is kind of like very like fresh kind of cut wood and then all this fruit. So like the cherry note that you'd expect in like a really well aged bourbon you get in this and like rhubarb and like apricot and cranberries and raspberries. Really, really sweet. Get like a really like candy bubblegum note. You know, the vanillas, the caramels. It's like if you took a bourbon and blended a little bit of like uh, scotch into it. It's crazy. It's absolutely insane. And I absolutely love it. It's so, so good. Very rich, very bold, um, very like in your face whiskey for sure. It's glorious. Let's go palette. So while those notes on the uh, nose carry over to the palate, those sweet uh, candy bubble gums, the fruit note, the berries, lots of cherry. So like cherry candy, like uh, like cherry hulls, like cough drops, um, like cherry liqueur, um, cherry like cough syrup, all that like cherry um, heavy, like with a twist of like medicinal aspect to it. You get lots of that on the on the palate and on the finish. Um, the brown sugars, uh, the caramels, the vanillas, all coming through. The cola note, uh, really kind of prevalent, uh, like the kind of like gummy cola candies. Even get maybe it's like some tropical fruit in there. There's a pineapple note in here that is really, really good, almost kind of like grilled pineapple. There's lots of stuff going on. It's, it's a very like Frankenstein, weird, interesting whiskey. It's like I said, like you take a really good aged bourbon and, and a scotch and you're kind of just mixing it together and putting this like Taiwanese uh, twist on it. It's insane. Uh, like I said, one of the most unique whiskeys that I've tasted before and uh, absolutely love it. Um, so the evaporation on these bottles is a lot. Um, the oldest Cavalans ever bottle, I think this one was the oldest at a time and then surpassed a year later um, by this one, but yeah, 14 years in the climate, you know, these bottles, this one is just one of 77, and this one is just one of 57. So like just 57 bottles in the entire cask, you know, it lets you know how much evaporation is, is happening there. Um, but yeah, it just makes for a really uh, exceptional whiskey. Um, profiles, about the same. So let's just go into the newest bottle, and I'll just tell you some of the differences that I pick up, because those core notes, um, those all that cherry, uh, all that like uh, fruit, that sweetness, it's, it's this, still here. I think this one, you're getting maybe a little more like tobacco kind of aspect to it. Um, the oak is definitely a little bit different. Instead of like the fresh cut wood that I was getting here, maybe this one more kind of like a, like a, a damp, uh, weather aged kind of uh, wood note. So. I'd say like the berry fruits are even more amplified on the 2020 bottling. Uh, maybe like a little more, almost like a little like vegetal uh, herbal kind of aspect to this one as well that I wasn't getting on the 2019. But those core notes, uh, you know, are all right there. And again, just really, really good whiskey. Um, score wise for me on these. So I'm gonna score the 2019 first. That's getting a huge score for me. Uh, I named this one my uh, World Whiskey of the Year in 2019. Uh, it's getting 92 and a half out of 100 uh, value. So this one I got a good deal on. I think I paid around 300-ish dollars for it. 
um, maybe just take above 325, let's call it. Um, definitely, I thought that's a, a good value. So I'd pump that up a half tick for value. I think what you're getting out of this um, for that price, you know, is competing with whiskeys that are, you know, a lot older than it. And the complexity, uniqueness, the uh, the oddballness of this. Uh, you haven't, I haven't found this profile in any other whiskey I've ever tried. So um, I definitely think that it's worth the price. I'll tick it up a half point for value, making it 93 out of 100. Let's move on to the 2020 release. Uh, this bottle, uh, on loan by my good friend Rob Wasty in the Six. Thank you so much. Um, this one I'm scoring 93 out of 100, so a half tick more than I scored this one. Um, I think that the extra little uh, aspects with like that tobacco note I really, really like, and you're bumping up the fruits even more, like that berry fruit, you get a little bit more of it here, and the oak profile, um, I think I like just a, a half tick more. Um, so 93 out of 100 for this one. Uh, I won't score for value because I didn't buy it because it was a lot more money. Uh, prices went up big time uh, on this one. I think they were paying around 450 Canadian dollars for that. Um, so, you know, a big, big increase, uh, over a hundred dollar, almost 150 more, um, than this release was for that price. You're getting up to where I was kind of, I held off, um, cause I did have a couple of these already bunkered. So I didn't feel the need to spend the extra to get the newer release, uh, a year older. Um, I did like it just a tick more, but honestly, these are neck and neck as far as I'm concerned. Um, they're just so, so, so great. But um, yeah, so prices went up. It held me back from buying it at that price. So if I think if I paid that, I might shave a, a point, half point for value on that. But honestly, for the uniqueness of this, if you've never had it before, if I hadn't, if I don't own a couple of these in the bunker, I probably would have bought it um, just because it is that good. So there you have it. Let me know what you think. Cavalier and Virgin Oak. These things were hard to come by. Of course, they were lots of single casks uh, released around the world. Different places were doing bottlings of them. Uh, you know, you had places in, in the UK doing bottlings exclusively. Um, of course, the uh, the Cava fan group did one. The Truth Malters did one. Um, so yeah, definitely hard to come by. Uh, not a lot of people were fortunate to get one. Uh, so super, super happy that... Uh, I'm able to have these today because uh, they're so, so good. If you haven't tried the Virgin Oaks, uh, let me know what's the best Cavalan that you've had so far. Leave in the comments down below, and if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. I will uh, catch you guys next time.